Bryce Harper played first base for the very first time, and he's already looking like a gold glover over there. Kyle Tucker with batting gloves is apparently prime Cody Bellinger, and speaking of Cody Bellinger, he went yard again. He won't stop the leading baseballs in his comeback season, and Shohei Otani, he was on the bump versus the Pirates, maybe his final start in Anaheim. We'll talk about that later on. All of that in today's MLB Recap, a series in which we recap every single game, almost every single day, and a reminder, if you're going to any concerts or baseball games anytime soon, save yourself 20 bucks off on SeatGeek, you Using code fuzzy. The battle of the ALEs continued yesterday. We have the Orioles and the Toronto, the Toronto, the Tampa Bay Rays. Sorry about that. Kyle Bradish, he wasn't bad in this one, but that second inning RBI to Harold Ramirez, that was pretty much the game right there. So Harold, he gave his team a 1-0 lead and it would have been more, but look at Gunnar Henderson. Jorge Mateo, who? Now Gunnar is still a rookie and he made one of the best plays of the entire year to rob Randy Rose Miranda to start the sixth. Plus, he's been raking the last few weeks as well. Now you can't rob that one. Isaac Paredes, he now has 18 home runs on the season. He is a sneaky power bat. All of that run support was for Zach Eflin, who was fantastic. He struck out eight Orioles over seven shutout. He only allowed two base hits along the way. Now we're going to go to the bottom half of the seventh and Shintaro Fujinami, he's making his Baltimore, oh no. The very first pitch that he threw was yanked for a home run. Jose Siri, he has 20 home runs and four outs above average defensively. Honestly, he's kind of the right-handed fast version of Joey Gallo because he strikes out with the best of them. Tampa Bay, they end their five-game losing streak and this division race is going to be stressful. Both teams are tied yet again for first place. Now, before we talk about the Yankee game, I do have an update on Aaron Judge. He says that he's close, but he also said that he's probably going to be playing in pain the rest of the way, no matter what. And I don't think that the Yankees really care because they're seven games under 500 ever since he went out with an injury. So let's see if the Yankees can capitalize on the lowly Kansas City Royals. And that's a good start right there. The trend for Franchi Cordero is he's the best player in baseball for about four days. Then he goes over 48. He gets sent down to the minors, he rakes in the minors, and then kind of rinse and repeat. He gets called up, he rakes, he sucks, gets set down. We're going to probably see that for the rest of the year. Mickey Mantle, I mean, Michael Massey, he answered with a thunderous three-run upper deck home run. Yankees fans, they were punching air, and thankfully, Billy McKinney, he came ready to play. That's a huge three-run home run for the Yankees. Anthony Rizzo, he's probably in the worst slump of his entire career, and Bobby Wood Jr., he used his world-class sprinter speed to make a sick running grab in the fifth inning. It's all bad for Anthony Rizzo right now, but thankfully, his teammate Glaber Torres picked him up. Glaber has 15 home runs on the year. And look at Billy McKinney flying in the outfield. He robs Drew Waters of extra base hits, but no one is going to rob that one. Michael Massey, he does it again. Brian Cashman got to be on the phone right now to try and acquire Michael Massey. The New York Penn, it's been pretty shaky as of late, so it's 5-4 to four into the ninth inning. And Bobby, he made Volpe reach for a ball. And New York, they got bailed. That would have been an infield single, but the last that was made at third, you can never do that. You never run on a ball in front of you if you're a runner at second base. That's bad, bad baseball right there. Clay Holmes, he has 12 saves on the year as the Yankees barely beat the Royals 5-4. to four. Here we go, the Giants and the Nationals. Listen, I'm not saying that Lane Thomas is the most underrated player in baseball, but uh, he just might be. He has 16 home runs, 52 RBIs, and 8 stolen bases. So that was what he did in 2022. So he matched that 2022 production in 51 fewer games. Kyber Ruiz roped an RBI double to put the Nationals up one. And I got to talk about this CJ Abrams kid because over his last 23 games, he's hitting 350 with 10 extra base hits and 12 stolen bases. Extend him now. He's still just 22 years old. Jack Peterson, he followed up with a monster shot of his own, tying it at three runs apiece. When the ice horse, he clutched up. That's Michael Chavis' nickname, by the way, the ice horse. Joey Manessis, he's been pretty quiet this year. He doubled in one more in the fifth. He is the latest member of the 50 RBI club. And Kyle Finnegan, he has nine saves on the year. The Nationals, they're top six in batting average and OPS over the last two weeks. But they're third worst in team ERA as a pitching staff. So if they can fix the staff going forward, in the 2024-2025, they're actually going to be pretty good. We haven't even talked about James Wood or Robert Hassel. Now, after this game, I guess the Giants kind of got spooked because they lost to the Nationals. They were on the horn, and they have officially inquired about Justin Verlander of the Mets. JV has a full no-trade clause, so he would have to waive it if he wanted to, but the Mets, they're 45-51. and 51. Should they blow it up? Let me know in the comments. Now, staying with teams that may or may not blow it up, the Padres, they were in Detroit, and man, Juan Soto, he's stupid. And I say that in a nice way, like he's stupid and doesn't make sense with how gifted he is offensively. He goes 450 feet. And after Jake Cronenworth drove in two on a long double to make it a three spot, I thought that Matt Veerling made that play. Akil Badu, he actually made a play in left field.
field. He robbed Ha Sung Kim of a home run. I did not have Akil Badu, the bad man, as MLB's best defensive left fielder on my 2023 bingo card, but I'm cool with it. Juan Soto, he stepped up and crushed his second of the game, then went 463 feet the other way. He has 19 home runs and a 425 on base percentage, just mind-boggling numbers. Riley Green, he's back and healthy. He made it a one-run game in the seventh, but Josh Hader, the dude now has 24 saves and a 0.97 ERA. I'm not saying that Josh Hader is a future Hall of Famer, but the dude, he's on pace to be one. The Phillies were taking on the Guardians in front of almost 40,000 people, a sold-out crowd in Cleveland. Now, Bryce Harper, he was playing his first ever game at first base, and more on him in just a second because Josh Bell, he's been red hot as of late. He's sitting 423 with seven RBIs over his last seven games. David Fry, he fried a baseball for an RBI single that ate up Trey Turner. I think that Trey should have caught that ball, but whatever. So Cleveland's out in front, and I'm going to skip to the third because the two-timer made an insane grab in foul territory. He said after the game he thought there was more netting, but he made that grab. It was pretty awesome in my opinion. Stephen Kwan, he grabbed an RBI single, and same with Ahmed Rosario and Josh Naylor in the sixth inning. Check this out. Since May 30th, almost two months ago, Josh Naylor is hitting 395 with 44 RBIs in 40 games. That is wild. Philly, they then decided to ruin my walk because I left my house. I was listening to the radio broadcast. Back-to-back -back home runs from JT Ramuto and my friend Bryson Stott. Bryson, by the way, is hitting 307 with nine home runs and 15 stolen bases. Just an FYI. It was stressful, but Emmanuel Class A, he notched his 26th save. Cleveland, they really need the Minnesota Twins to lose. And I'll just go ahead and spoil it right now. That was not going to happen because even though Chicago went up early, Alex Kirloff, he quickly erased that deficit with a two-run home run. And Buxton, he had himself a day. He sent out a three-run home run. He was 0 for 26 before that at bat. Buxton, he grabs another. He's hitting under 200 on the year with 102 strikeouts and 79 games. So he's been awful, but kind of good at the same time. That's big for his confidence, those two home runs. Jeffers, he launched the fourth home run in the first four innings for Minnesota. And Yasmani Grandal, I don't know if the White Sox are going to move on from this guy, but he's having himself a nice second half, or at least a start to the second half. He has two home runs and seven RBIs over his last five games. But Kirilov, he got both of those runs back on a two-run double in the seventh inning. Kirilov, he's having a good season. A 285 batting average with 20 extra base hits and 31 RBIs to go along with the 132 OPS plus in 63 games. The Twins, they beat the White Sox pretty easily, 9-4. The Dodgers were in Texas for the first time since they won a World Series with Corey Seager on that squad. Texas first baseman Nathaniel Lowe, he jump-started the scoring with a two-run oppo taco. I straight up thought that was going to be a pop-up, but it left. The other first baseman, Freddie Freeman, I guess he's all right. That's a two-run double to tie it. And J.D. Martinez, almost a J.D. Davis for some reason, he singled in one more after that to make it 3-2. to two. Now, Texas, they did steal the lead back, but Freddie, he went 421 feet to tie it, and then Corey Seager saw that and laughed. He went 435 feet. Corey has one of the most insane stat lines I've seen in quite some time. He's hitting 350 with 15 home runs and a 182 OPS+. plus. I'm not saying that he's been Luis Arise, but he's basically been Luis Arise with power. Here comes L.A. again. The Dodgers went up a few after some bad Texas baseball and Will Smith made it hurt even more. That's a two-run double. J.D. Martinez, he joined Freddie with a three RBI day and Mookie Betts, he got his team into the double-digit run club. The Dodgers, they kind of spanked the Rangers 11-5. to The Astros were taking on the A's in Oakland and Houston is still very much fighting for that AL West crown. They're not trying to be dethroned one year after winning the World Series. Kyle Tucker with batting gloves is still such a weird sight to me, but he's not ditching them anytime soon. He has such a sweet swing, by the way. Lefty-lefty crime off of J.P years. Bregman, he wore JP down with an 11 pitch at bat and he won the battle with a two run home run. Did Kyle do it again? Okay. He's just casually deleting baseballs. Oh wait, no way. Is that number three? King Tuck with a three home run game. He's hitting 303 with 17 home runs, 17 stolen bases, basically a 150 OPS plus. Ryan Presley, he has 23 saves on the season now. That was his 100th career save. The Astros, they beat the A's 6-4. So Houston, they do get a game on the Rangers. They're now just three games back after winning their third game in a row. The Cubs are going to try and put an end to the Cardinals' six-game win streak. And Miles Mastroboni, I love that name, he wanted it. He belted his first career home run. By the way, he has eight stolen and bases in his first 83 at bats. That's pretty crazy. He has not been caught one time, knock on wood. Mike Tauchman, he put the Cubs up one after a double. He's got 13 extra base hits and 49 games. Not bad at all. And there it is. There it is. Belly bombs. They're so back. Bellinger is hitting 
462 with six home runs and 15 RBIs in July. I need that player of the month card in MLB The Show more than I need air to breathe. Justin Steele, he was back to normal in this one, striking out nine Cardinals over six and a third. He has a very impressive 2.9 ERA on the season. The only problem is, Nolan Arenado, he's been an RBI cheat code for a few weeks now. He brought it to within one, and he's yet again on pace to have another 30 home run, 100 RBI season. That would be the eighth time already in 11 seasons, and I don't even think that 2020 counts that he's had 30 home runs, 100 RBIs. Adver Alzali, he has eight saves on the year. The Cubs, they do barely nudge past the Cardinals, four to three. The Braves and the Brewers, I completely forgot that Orlando Arcia was the shortstop for the Brewers back in the day, so it makes sense that he looks so comfortable right there, and I guess it doesn't matter where Austin Riley is playing. He's going to be comfortable no matter what. He's got five home runs and 14 RBIs over his last six games. He's on pace for his third consecutive season with 30 home runs, so he's kind of a Kroger's version of Nolan Arenado because Arenado is so much better defensively, but Austin Riley, he's no slouch over there. Willie Adamas, he made things very interesting with a two-run home run, but the Atlanta bullpen, they stepped up. They did not allow a single base hit the rest of the way. Kirby Yates, the former best closing pitcher in baseball, he struck out three. He's thrown a slider like 1% of the time, and then he ends the game on a slider. That's why the big leagues are so tough. He had his second save of the season, the Braves. They beat the Brewers 6-4, to four. and obviously, if we're talking about the Brewers, we got to talk about the Reds next. Reds fans probably don't want to admit it, but they are Braves fans for the next few days, and they have to capitalize on the Braves beating the Brewers 6-4. to four. Now, Cattell Marte, he had himself a monster fantasy day for the Diamondbacks. He nearly hit for the cycle. More on him in just a second, because now it's Spencer Steer time. Spencer Steer, he doubled in two in the fourth to give Cincinnati a lead, but like I said, Cattell Marte, he had a big day. An RBI triple right there. Cincinnati, they knew that pitching was going to be an issue in this game, so they had to put this game out of reach and fast. Rookie Will Benson, he laced an RBI double to make it 5-3 to three in Arizona. They intentionally walked Ellie De La Cruz to set up a bases loaded opportunity for Matt McClain. Um, respect Matt McClain. He's sitting over 300 with 9 home runs and 34 RBIs as a rookie. He's 5 foot 8 so he's getting a lot of comparisons to Dustin Pedroia. I'm okay with that because Dustin and Matt McClain, they're very similar. Cattell, he wasn't done. He smoked another home run. The dude has 17 home runs and a 140 OPS plus. He's on pace for a 7 win season. He stepped up once more but he grounded out to end the game as Alexis Diaz now has 28 saves on the year. The Reds, they've won 3 games in a row and they're now just a game and a half back of Milwaukee for first place. Shohei was looking pretty good through three innings against the Pirates, but the Pirates broke out the boomsticks in the fourth inning. Back-to-back -back home runs from G-Man Choi and Henry Davis. This Henry Davis kid is no joke. He knew that it was gone as well. This dude is tough. You know who else is tough? Mickey Moniak. He's been a tough out all season long. He doubled in starting pitcher Shohei Otani. I don't know why I said it like that, but Mike Moustakis, there he is for the lead. They're now calling him Malibu Mike, I guess. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. One more for the Angels that came off the bat of rookie Trey Cabbage. Trey hit 290 with 23 home runs and 81 AAA games, so he rakes. It's 5-2 Halos. Ain't 5-2 anymore because Jack Sawinski, he went 440 feet on that two-run missile, only to have the Angels answer right back with two more home runs. So it was a home run derby in Anaheim last night. Zach Neto, he went 440, and Taylor Ward, he put Otani and the Halos up 8-4. The Pirates, they were not going to go away easy. They tried to mount a comeback, and I'm telling you, this Henry Davis kid is legit. He's the first player ever with a multi-home run game off of Otani. Carlos Estevez, he kind of quieted things in the final inning. He struck out two. He has 22 saves on the year. Now, do not go anywhere because we're going to give a huge update on the AL and NL wildcard standings after the Mariners and Marlins highlights. You say Kikuche was facing off against his former team, the Mariners, and this dude had six punchies through four innings. He wanted to remind Seattle fans that he was not a lost cause. He just needed to be fixed a little bit. He needed some extra time to develop, I guess. Seattle rookie Bryce Miller, he kept up. It was 0-0 in the fifth inning. When Danny Jansen popped off for the game's first run, Bryce, he was still excellent. He had one earned run with six strikeouts over five and a third. He just needed Yusei to come out the game, and look at that. Mike Ford, he blooped one for the Mariners' first run, and Ty France clutched up in the eighth to tie it. Teoscar Hernandez, he's going to get a chance to walk off his former team, and he got the job done. The Mariners, they've won two games in a row. Now, usually I put the walk-offs towards the beginning of the video, but uh, yeah, I saved the Mariners for towards the end. That's because I want to talk about some wild card standings, and that includes the Marlins in the National League, and they have not been playing good. CJ Crone, he pummeled a two-run home run right before Alan Trejo made it a three-zip game on an RBI extra base hit of his own and yikes. Jerks and Profar sent out a two-run home run of his own, and Elias Diaz pretty much put the game on ice with his 10th home run of the season. Peter Lambert, he threw zero after zero against the Marlins. He ended up needing just 77 pitches to get through five shutout. Colorado, they went easy 6-1. to one. The Marlins, 
I mean, this is bad. They are losers of seven in a row, and they've been outscored by 17 runs in those seven games. They have not won a single game in the second half. Is this the curse of Yuri Perez? It might be. So before we do today's Immaculate Grid and we talk about the wild card standings, I'm going to give an update on the stat leaders across baseball. So Luis Rise, he's still hitting 373. Zach Gallen is tied with a bunch of different guys with 11 wins. Home runs, Matt Olson is creeping up to Shohei Otani, but Shohei, he has 35. He's way out in front. Well, not way out because Matt Olson is raking as of late. Shane McClanahan, he is leading everyone with a 2.56 ERA. Matt Olson and Adolis Garcia are tied with 80 RBIs. Camilo Duvall is the only guy with 30 saves in all of baseball. Luis Luis Arise, he's four ahead of Bo Bichette for the league league and base hits. Strikeouts, it's Spencer, strikeout Strider, stolen bases. Ronald is now ahead of Este Ruiz, but he's on the IL right now, but he's about to come back. So there's the update on the stat leaders. So because the Rays have a losing record against the Orioles this year, they're in the wild card spot right now, even though they're tied for first place. The Astros and the Blue Jays round out the other two that would be in the playoffs right now, but you have the Red Sox at two and a half games back, the Yankees at three games back, the Angels, they won four in a row, so they're four games back. Then you have the Mariners and the Guardians within five and a half games. The AL wildcard is going to be an absolute mad dash to the finish line. In the National League, you have the Diamondbacks and the Giants still tied at 54 and 44. You have the Phillies, the Reds, and the Marlins all tied for the final spot. Then you have the Padres, the Cubs, the Mets, and the Cardinals all within nine games. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and do today's Immaculate Grid. The uh, Braves and the A's. So two A's. I'm going to go with Rye. Zell Iglesias, I'm pretty sure that Ryzel Iglesias, yeah, 18%, so that's not the best, but it's also not the worst. The A's and the Tigers, I know that Michael Lorenzen played for both of these. Uh, I probably should have put his first name, but there he is. Michael Lorenzen, 10%. MVP for the Angels. All right, so we have Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and Vladimir Guerrero. Those are easy picks. Are those the only three guys? I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go with Guerrero because I feel like uh, Mike Trout and Otani are going to be the easier answers. 12%. Okay. We have the Rangers and the Braves. Rangers and the Braves. Did Will Smith? Yeah, Will Smith. I know he's on. I got to make sure I pick the right one. 2012 to 2023. Will Smith. There you go. The Rangers and the Tigers. Did Pudge Rodriguez play for both? I think that um, or Yvonne. What's his name? Ivan Rodriguez. He played for both, right? Please. Okay, that's a good one right there. MVP. For the Rangers, I'm going to go with Josh Hamilton, even though I probably could have gone with someone like, did Juan Gonzalez win an MVP? Okay, 42%. That's really going to hurt my rarity score. Rookie of the year for the Braves, we have Michael Harris. I'm going to go ahead and just, or should I go Mike Soroka? Did Mike Soroka win rookie of the year? I think I'm going to go Michael Harris just to be safe. At this point, I'd rather get them all right than worry about my rarity score. Uh, rookie of the year for the Tigers. Miguel, no, Miguel Cabrera started off with the Marlins. Akil Badu did not win rookie of the year. I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to go to MVP, who also won rookie of the year. Dustin, didn't Dustin Pedroia win both? Or did he win it in like uh, Ichiro? Did Ichiro win both? Um... Okay, Dustin Pedroia, 2%. I was a little bit scared, so we need one more. Who was a rookie of the year for the Tigers? This is probably going to be one that I don't get. Maybe the only player that is coming to my brain is Maglio Ordonez. Did I get that? No, I got it wrong, but no player is coming to my head, so I'm okay with losing that. Oh, man, I could have gone with Justin Verlander. I forgot that he won Rookie of the Year. I was also thinking about Max Scherzer, but yeah, JV, I should have guessed that, but these were the other popular picks for all of those guesses. That does it for today's MLB recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to leave a like if you're brand new. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.